Since the Bible was originally written in Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek, there is naturally a, a linguistic gap between those languages and our own. Our English translations of the Bible are, are very good, but there is something lost in translation. One helpful way to help bridge that gap is to do word studies of significant terms found in a passage of scripture. Since this gap exists, we need good tools to help us do these word studies well. I'm gonna share my favorite books for doing word studies of the biblical languages. I'm gonna break this down into a few different categories because there's different tools for different tasks at different skills and different price levels as well. I'm gonna give some strengths and weaknesses for these resources that I'm listing. So let's dive in. I'm JC Schroeder and this is Bite Size Seminary. I'm gonna start small here with the more basic resources to get you started in doing word studies. Spoiler alert though, my favorite book is in the next category, which we'll look at in just a minute. The first thing to say here is to use other translations they can help clarify a meaning of the passage. A different wording might make more sense to you from a different translation than the one you typically use. They can also highlight where there is debate about the meaning of a word. If you notice that two translations render a word differently, that may signal to you and highlight a word that is worth spending a little bit more time trying to understand its meaning. You're going to have to be selective in doing word studies, and this step can go a long way to help you to choose the right words. The Net Bible is also worth checking out as it has significant study and translation notes. It's super good, and it can be accessed for free online. You should check that one out. The first book I'll mention here is Mounce's Complete Expository Dictionary of Old and New Testament Words. This is probably the most inexpensive and accessible resource for the person who doesn't know the biblical languages. It's geared toward the layperson, to the average reader of the Bible. It's a helpful resource covering both Old and New Testaments in one volume. It is oriented toward the English reader, and you look up words based on their English translation rather than the Hebrew or the Greek word. I do find that the discussion of the words is quite limited, and some of the entries are pretty, pretty lacking. It can be helpful. It is a helpful book, and it can be helpful, but it is, I think, quite bare bones. So maybe not the best resource, but it's probably the cheapest and easiest one to use for the average person. The next book I think is, is probably much better than Mounce's Dictionary, but unfortunately it only covers the New Testament where Mounce's covers both Old and New Testament. It is the Concise New International Dictionary of New Testament Theology and Exegesis. This is relatively inexpensive and it is very accessible even if you don't know the biblical languages. You have to look them up by their Greek word or word group, not by the English, but it is easy to use if you don't know Greek. This is the abridged version of the larger five volume set, which I'll talk about in a minute. I do really, really, really wish there was an Old Testament counterpart to this book, a concise version, but this is definitely worth your time and money. I think personally, in terms of bang for your buck, this is probably the best one, even though it is only the New Testament. The next category is theological dictionaries. This category probably is going to provide you the most depth in doing a word study. I think it's probably going to be the most helpful for us. My favorite overall best book, favorite go-to resource for doing word studies is going to be these two sets of books the New International Dictionary of Old Testament Theology and Exegesis, and its New Testament counterpart, the New International Dictionary of New Testament Theology and Exegesis. That is such a mouthful, and the abbreviations don't help me either. But these are wonderful resources to help you to create a well-thought-out word study. There are five volumes for both sets. 
Now, I will say that these are not the most inexpensive tools. They're, they're expensive, but they offer the best amount of info for both people who know the biblical languages and those that do not. So it really hits that middle ground nicely of being helpful for uh, scholars or for people who are doing more serious study and for the average just reader of scripture that wants a little bit more. This treads that middle ground really, really well. These two sets fall into the more theological category where you will get significant discussions about the use of a word. You'll get at times several pages uh, about that word or about that word group, and it distinguishes between the uses in the different sections of the Bible. Some of the strengths of these sets is that it provides comprehensive discussions with a look toward the theological uses of the word or word group. It is easily accessible to all readers, even if you don't know the biblical languages. It also I think helpfully comes from an evangelical perspective. Some of the weaknesses here, besides the long winded name, is that it's expensive. And that's uh, to me slightly annoying because it makes really good research uh, cost prohibitive for a lot of believers. But uh, it is really, really a helpful resource. For the New Testament, if, if this is too expensive, you can get the, the concise one volume edition, which I mentioned earlier. These full sets are my favorites, and I think well worth the money if you're able to afford them. There are a few more sets that are similar in this theological category, and I think they are worth looking at and they can be worth having, but in my view are either a bit more difficult to use for the average person, or they have like some linguistic or methodological flaws, or just at times just like questionable arguments. They're still helpful, but probably better uh, used after the New International Dictionaries that I just mentioned. The first one is the Theological Word Book of the Old Testament. It's a nice, relatively inexpensive and accessible two-volume set, but it does seem like the entries can be limited at times and not as helpful at times. The next one is a well-known resource for both the Old and New Testament in, in two sets, the Theological Dictionary of the Old Testament and the Theological Dictionary of the New Testament. These are massive sets at 17 and 10 volumes, respectively. But at times, the entries have uh, some linguistic flaws. This is especially true in the New Testament edition, and they are expensive. They're also a bit more difficult to use unless you know the biblical languages. So this, I think, creates a barrier for the average uh, English reader who's trying to use these. If you're going on a deep lexical dive for, say, a paper or something like that, these additional resources are definitely valuable and necessary to do your research. But for the average person just trying to understand the word better, the new International Dictionary series will probably serve you better, in, in my judgment. The next category is the standard or technical dictionary. These are the standard works for working in the original languages. Now, they can be expensive and they can be difficult to use if you don't know Hebrew and Greek. They don't offer the detailed theological discussions, but really there is no substitute for their definitions as well as their morphological analysis. This group, I think, is more for the serious student, or if you know or are learning the biblical languages. Let's start with the standard Hebrew lexicons. The first is Brown Driver Briggs, or BDB. This is a classic dictionary, and I think it comes from the early 1900s. Even though it is quite old, it is still extremely valuable. Since it's older, it is fairly inexpensive and accessible while still having really good lexical judgments. It really makes it an easy buy um, for you because of how inexpensive it is. Some of the weaknesses of it are that since it's older, it's missing a lot of the key advances in Hebrew, especially with the Dead Sea Scrolls. And it is also, I find, difficult to use even if you know Hebrew. What it does is it lists the words not alphabetically, like maybe an English dictionary would, but by the Hebrew root. So you'll need to be able to discern the root of a word in order to look it up 
unless you're using an electronic version like Logos or Accordance, which just makes things a whole lot easier. So that's the one con with B2B. It is kind of difficult to use if you don't know Hebrew or even if you're learning Hebrew. Now, the second standard dictionary for Hebrew is the Hebrew Aramaic lexicon of the Old Testament or Halot. This is the most up-to-date and complete dictionary for biblical Hebrew available. This is the gold standard. It's easier to use than BDB and incorporates new linguistic information from the Dead Sea Scrolls and other material as well. The one weakness I think of this five-volume set is that it's expensive. If you're doing serious Hebrew study and you have the money, this one is the one to buy. Now, if you're not able to fork out the cash for Halot, or you just want a single volume dictionary that's easier to use than BDB, then you want to check out the concise edition of Halot called Kalot. That is the concise Hebrew Aramaic lexicon of the Old Testament edited by Holiday. This is an inexpensive, accessible tool that lists its words alphabetically, which makes the experience, in my opinion, much easier. One of the weaknesses of it, though, is that it is not as quite up-to-date as the full five-volume Halot is, and there are uh, some differences in the content between the full and the concise editions. But this is a really helpful Hebrew lexicon. Now, let's talk about Greek dictionaries. The gold standard for the New Testament is a Greek-English lexicon of the New Testament and other early Christian literature, third edition, or BDAG known for the editors Bauer, Donker, Art, and Gingrich. The third edition here offers significant advancements from the previous editions, especially in formatting. One of the main things that separates this single volume apart from others is that it gives definitions of words, not just a single gloss or translation. It really helps to clarify the differing uses of a word. It also has superb morphological notes and citations. So sometimes you'll come across a word and it just looks really funky in the Greek New Testament and BDAG will help explain why it looks like that. You can almost use this dictionary as a mini concordance because of all its cites to the biblical text. Now, this book is expensive, but really there is no better Greek dictionary for the New Testament. A second Greek dictionary worth looking at is Laonida's Greek-English lexicon of the New Testament based on semantic domains. This is a more unique dictionary in that instead of listing a word with all of its meanings together, it orders the dictionary according to a singular meaning with the various words that have that meaning. So it's helpful to see the distinctions and relationships between words. And I find it's a really helpful resource for translation and understanding the exact uh, definition of a word. For this next category, I just want to quickly mention a couple of resources for extra biblical texts. These are resources that are probably better suited if you're really getting into the weeds of things. The first one I want to mention is a standard dictionary for the Septuagint, the Greek translation of the Old Testament. It is a Greek-English lexicon of the Septuagint, revised edition by Lust. If you're looking to compare the definitions of a word from the New Testament and its use in the Septuagint, then this is a great resource. You get a little bit of that in BDAG, um, but this, is, I think, is really helpful in making that transition from New Testament into Septuagint uses. Two other resources for wider Greek is LSJ, or Liddell, Scott, and Jones, or I'm not sure how to say the guy's first name. It's either Liddell or Little, Little, Scott, and Jones, LSJ. We'll go with that. This has long been the standard classical Greek dictionary. A new work that might be replacing LSJ, or at least stands next to it, is the Brill Dictionary of Ancient Greek. Some in biblical studies have called this Brill Dag to match BDAG for the New Testament. We got lots of jokes here, don't we? If you want to look up the use of a word in wider Greek than the New Testament, which is a super important task, these are the dictionaries to use. Finally, I want to suggest one final resource that is not a dictionary, and that is Exegetical Fallacies by D.A. Carson. The reason is he spends a significant amount of time talking about the mistakes we tend to make when we do word studies. Now, word studies are an important element of the process of interpreting scripture. 
But a lot of the time we get that process wrong. So Carson has some helpful advice for how we can be careful in our word study tasks. That's all the resources I have for today. I hope that's helpful just a bit for you. If you're interested in other resources to help you read the Bible, I have a whole nother video on the best books for understanding the historical cultural context of the Bible, which you can see on the screen. Thanks so much for watching and may the Lord bless you.